Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you get your property questions in, well, they're normally property-based, and we get you those answers back right at you. And it's really simple to get involved. Each and every week we give you the details, but just in case you've forgotten, here they are again. Yes, very, very simple. Just give us a call on 013 808 0035, or you can go to propertyhub.net slash ask. Take your pick. It doesn't matter. Just get your question into us so you can get your question answered just like Mo is about to now. Hi, Rob and Rob. I'm Mo, a junior doctor who graduated from Nottingham. I'm ready to buy my first house. Thank you for the amazing resources and the amazing advice you've given me over the last year. And it's really helped me in kind of getting the knowledge and knowing what I'm doing for this first venture. My question is regarding finding good deals on a hot market. I do think there are good deals to be found, but what I find is that every time I'm willing to buy a house and put an offer in, either someone's got there before me very quickly. For example, they were able to view on the same day or the next day and before I can fit into my schedule, or someone just waiting to overpay for the house. And it just seems like every good deal I find, maybe there's 20 other people who are going to find that deal and want to buy that house. So what's your advice in terms of securing good deals in a hot market? Or do we have to just accept that we're going to overpay? I know there is kind of a psychological battle here as well. It'd be very interesting to get your take on it. Thank you so much for everything you do. Mo, thank you for the question. It's one that a lot of people are going to be asking right now, because as we've covered extensively on the podcast in recent weeks, the market is a little bit warm right now. It's on fire, in fact. It's absolutely mad what is going on in many parts of the country. And that's good and bad news. That is great news for people who've already got a portfolio, because it means the value of it's going to be going up. But if you're trying to build a portfolio, it does make life more challenging. It makes it especially challenging if you are a junior doctor, because I'm aware that that means that your schedule isn't going to be the most flexible. You're not going to be blessed with lots of free time to go and drop everything every time an interesting property comes along. And anecdotally, I've heard multiple cases of people listing their property, getting 10 people around on day one and selling it for over asking price on that first day. So in some cases, it really is a situation where you need to get in there straight away or miss out. So what do you do about that? Even if you can get there and be in a position to put an offer in, how do you make sure you don't overpay? Well, the way to think about it is the same as it is at any point in the market, which is to ignore the asking price. Ignore it completely. Work out what you believe the property is worth. Bearing in mind that what the property is worth today is going to be different from what it was worth six months ago because the market has moved. But it's so important to do your research, see what else is on the market, look at what else is sold. You can see it on Rightmove and come to an opinion about what you are willing to pay for the property. And then if you can get an offer accepted at that price, that's great. And if you can't, then you can't. Sometimes that doesn't even mean paying over the asking price because the asking price can bear absolutely no resemblance to what the property is worth. That is the same in any market. But in a hot market, that is exaggerated. The other thing to bear in mind, though, is that there are points in the property cycle to drive a really hard bargain and times when it's not so possible to do that. When the market is struggling, you can achieve really great deals because there are people who need to sell and not many people wanting to buy. When the market is like it is now, there are still people who need to sell, but there are a lot of people who want to buy. Therefore, if you go in and put a cheeky low offer in, it's very unlikely to get accepted, whereas it would have done perhaps three years ago. So it's important to think, how important is it to you to get a really great deal? And it depends on what you're going to be doing with the property. If you're doing a refurb, for example, then getting in at the right price, and so you can still do your refurb and get the property revalued at the right amount to pull your money back out again, is really important. If you're looking at holding the property for 10 or 20 years, for example, if you pay an extra £5,000 now, are you going to notice in 10 or 20 years time because the capital growth that you'd expect to receive and the income that you would have had from that property over the intervening years would make that absolutely irrelevant so i'm not saying your entry price doesn't matter but i'm just saying is it more important to you to get a great deal or to get a good deal and actually get the deal done rather than waiting another year Absolutely. The other thing is, Mo, you're in a great position versus some other buyers. A lot of buyers out there will be part of a chain. So they might be selling their home. They haven't even put it on the market yet. They'll be at all different stages. Now, of course, there are going to be other cash buyers out there, but they're not going to be as many as those who are in chains. So the fact that this is your first venture 
and therefore you don't have to sell a property to buy this property means you are in a really good position. Now, if you're buying with a mortgage, get yourself a dip. That's a decision in principle. Because what you can do is you can start to put together a case of why your offer is stronger than someone else's. If somebody is prepared to pay a little bit more than you, but they've got to still sell their home before they can proceed, versus you, who's ready, doesn't have a chain, has the decision in principle on the mortgage, can prove all of that, well then, as a seller, they might be tempted to go with your option because you're more of a sure thing. So know your strengths, know your position, and take advantage of that. Make sure you make a lot of noise around that when you're dealing with the agent so that message gets across to the vendor. And before you look at any properties, make the agents aware of your position and how serious you are. There's going to be people contacting them by the droves at the moment, and they'll just want the easiest path to a sale. So if they think you're going to be that path, then chances are they're going to put stuff in front of you. So while it's a challenging market to do deals in, you are in a really good position. So make sure you leverage that as much as you can. Okay, Mo, hope that helps. Let's hear our next question now. This one's from Stephen. Hi guys, Stephen here, big fan of the show. Quick question for you. I know you guys like Liverpool. I know you've liked Manchester in the past. Another one in that region, Preston. Any thoughts on Preston at all? I've been reading one or two things. It sounds kind of interesting. Wondering if you guys have got any opinion on that. Thanks very much and keep up the great work. Hey Stephen, thank you for your question. Yes, we love Liverpool and Manchester. So Preston. Is that somewhere else that we love? So there's a lot going for Preston. For those who don't know, it's a city that's further north than those two locations we just mentioned. It's got really, really good transport links. It's just off the M6. It's on the West Coast Main Line. So you've got trains direct to London and also Scotland. There's a really good university. So why haven't we talked about it more often? Well, Preston does have a lot going for it. And absolutely, it can be an area you can consider investing in. And particularly with other cities doing really well at the moment looking at cities nearby, could be a smart move. Possibly the reason that we've not mentioned Preston that much, at least yet, is that there's probably stronger options out there. So if you're trying to get in for the future and be a little bit smarter with your investment, then maybe Preston could be the way to go. But with places like Liverpool especially, it's only just begun and affordability levels are really strong there. So there's plenty of legs in what we feel are probably safer bets. But It's not to say Preston's some second-rate area. You know, it's got a lot going for it. I've mentioned some things already that make it a compelling investment. So while it might not be an endorsement to go piling into Preston, you're certainly not going to hear me put you off either. What I would say, and something that we always say, and we have to because people keep making this mistake, but we'll keep saying it until we hear people not making this mistake any longer, is don't just go in. With Liverpool, Manchester, Preston, or any area, you can do a great deal and you can do an awful deal. Just because an area has a lot going for it doesn't mean the investment you're looking at has. So make sure that you do your research. Don't get overexcited by the fact that you're looking at hotspot area. Do that due diligence anyway. And if you follow that discipline within an area that's doing well or that has great potential then I'm sure you'll do just fine. Well, there you go. Two more questions answered. Hope that helped you both and hope it helped you, dear listener, as well. We are going to be back with more property goodness for you on Thursday when the Property Podcast returns. So enjoy your week till then and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 